Hey guys, it's Haley, and welcome to another bookish video. Today, I'm going to be getting into some dark and disturbing thriller recommendations. I've done videos about dark and disturbing books in the past, but in the past, those included horror books, extreme horror books, and I really went for like the most disturbing things that I've ever read. And honestly, I don't stand behind all of those ratings and thoughts, which I will be discussing in a later video. So I wanted to do a recommendation video about books that are maybe like not the most rife with trigger warnings. I mean, some of these definitely do have a lot of trigger warnings, but books that I feel like are palatable for a mainstream thriller audience that are still dark, disturbing, well-written, exciting, and some of my favorite books that I've ever read. Because if you know me, you know that I like a little bit of darkness. I I don't just like a straightforward murder mystery. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit bloody, a little bit disturbing, but doesn't cross over that line, these are the wrecks for you. I will go ahead and start out with one of my favorite books of all time. Like this thriller lives in my mind. I probably think about it once a week. It'll just like randomly show up in my mind. It has culty vibes. It has good for her vibes. It has a podcast element and it is extremely dark and intense. And that is The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. I absolutely love Ashley Winstead and this is my favorite of all of her books. I had the amazing honor of having her come to my book club live show when we read her most previous release last year in my pretty girl book club she was so phenomenal to talk to like seriously just an amazing amazing woman and getting to know her personality and how she operates as an author a little bit deeper it gave me a whole new appreciation for the last housewife in this book we are following a suburban woman who is listening to a true crime podcast by the pool it's just an average day she realizes the podcast host is talking about a case that she was involved with about her college best friend friend. So it reignites her interest in the case and she basically abandons her floofy suburban life to go and look into what possibly happened to her friend. She's thought for all these years that it was a suicide but now she thinks there's something deeper going on especially now that new suicides are happening around her college campus and she suspects that those might be murders as well. So she embroils herself in this dark underbelly of culty misogyny activities to expose this network and find justice for not just her friend but all women who might have found themselves in the clutches of this toxic power dynamic. There are very very explicit scenes in this book and as you can probably tell by my description there are some really dark themes. Definitely look at trigger warnings and if you have a weak stomach don't read this one but I would imagine if you clicked on this video you are wanting something like that. So if that is what you're looking for you will really like this book. It really struck a chord with me because the violence in this book is not for no reason. Everything is written very intentionally and the commentary is so so strong. I feel like if you're a woman, especially a woman who has been through the kind of violence that is talked about in this book, you're going to feel seen, you're going to cry, and that ending scene is gonna make your life. I swear that was the most satisfying reading experience I've ever had that last scene of this book if you know you know. Next up I have a recent read that was a book club pick for my book club. I keep mentioning my book club by the way it is always linked down below if you want to join and read along with us. A couple months ago we read The First Day of Spring by Nancy Tucker and I did not know the level of darkness we were going to get into with this book. It is heavy and it is disturbing. We are following a little girl who just committed her first murder of a little boy. So I thought this was going to be like creepy kid, good for her, kind of like campy vibes. No, 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 no. This is much darker than that. This is about the psychological effects of childhood neglect and abuse and how a victim might actually 
actually become a perpetrator as we see with our main character starting to commit murders. But it doesn't pathologize anything. It's written with this beautiful mental health aware lens. I absolutely loved it. This was another one of my favorite book club discussions that we've ever had because it was just so nuanced and I think part of what lended itself to such a great discussion was how this book was written. It was just so phenomenally done. Next up I have a YA book and that is allegedly by Tiffany D. Jackson. This is about another child killer, believe it or not. We're following our main character who is a 16 year old accused of killing a baby and she is currently in this halfway house and we are following her interactions with other kids basically trying to figure out if she did it or not and what her motivation was if she did and if she didn't how the hell did she end up accused of this murder it is so dark and so sad it has a similar heaviness to the first day of spring where it's not dark and disturbing and fast-paced and crazy like I definitely had to take breaks with the first day of spring and with allegedly because it was so heavy and so emotionally intense that I was just like I was overwhelmed but if you're looking for something super dark and super real like this literally feels real I'm sure there are unfortunately cases of this actually happening then you will love allegedly both this one and the previous i gave 4.5 out of five stars it was right there almost at the five star mark i am absolutely obsessed with both of them for their mental health rep and their commentary while maintaining a really engaging really disturbing plot next up i want to talk about voyeur by jf gonzalez and i'm sure you might recognize this author's name from another recommendation I've given quite a bit and that is Survivor by JF Gonzalez. Okay this one is extreme horror. It is intense. I do not recommend it for everyone or for many people at all honestly. It is a lot. It's one of my favorite books but it goes there. Okay, I would say it even crosses a line or two or five. If you want something similar, but you don't think that you can handle that level of horror, which is totally fine and acceptable, I feel like you should read Voyeur. This is kind of the thriller version of Survivor. Basically what's happening in this book is this mother is found dead and a tape of her murder is given to the family like one of the family members stumbles across this tape and they watch it and they're like oh my god this is literally a snuff film of my mother and so the race is on to figure out who is leaving these little pieces of evidence around for the family to find and who did it who murdered this poor suburban mother and why it is bloody it is intense it is fast-paced it is definitely disturbing but it doesn't have the emotional weight that the last couple wrecks have have. It's just kind of like the feeling of an action movie, but it's definitely, definitely dark. Not extreme horror dark, but dark for a mainstream audience. Next up, let's talk about Take It Back by Kia Abdullah. Absolutely love this book. I think it is so, so, so important. In this book, we're following a victim's advocate. And one day she has a girl walk into her office and she is deformed. She has a facial deformity and she She's also claiming that she was assaulted by a group of boys. So obviously there's commentary and conversations around, you know, assault doesn't happen because of attraction. It's about power because of her facial deformity. A lot of people don't believe her. But there's also an added element in this case where the accused boys are all Muslim and our main character, the victim's advocate, is Muslim as well. And the girl who is the accuser is white. So our main character feels like she is turning on her own culture and her own community, which is going through horrifying xenophobia just by standing up for her client. 
It is dark. It is disturbing. Obviously, there's sexual assault content. It is a huge moral dilemma that honestly, sometimes when I was reading, I, don't, I didn't even know what I would do or like where I landed if I was in the world of the book. But it was so well done. Not only are these commentary pieces fleshed out so, so well over the course of the book, but it's also so twisty and exciting. I could never guess where we were going to end up. Every twist and turn took me by surprise and there are a lot of them. Make sure, extra sure with this one to look at the trigger warnings. But if you feel like this is something that you're looking for, really dark, disturbing with a lot of meaning behind it, it's not just for shock factor, you will love this book. Next up, I have a series to recommend you. And I know you're probably like, a series? Haley doesn't read series. What is she talking about? This is one of my favorite series. I've ever read out of the few that I've read and one of very few thriller series and that is the Grant County series by Karen Slaughter. Karen to me is the queen of dark and disturbing thrillers. This is the first book in the Grant County series. It's called Blindsided and I think there are eight books total in every book. We're following the same investigators in the same small town. The main character is Dr. Sarah Linton who is the town doctor but because because it's such a small town she's also the coroner and we're following her love interest who is the chief of police as well as his deputy Lena who if you've read the Grant County series you fucking know I fucking hate her they could never make me like you Lena never each book we are following them investigating a different case every single case in every single book is disturbing as hell intense gore intense violence, intense themes, it is, it is dark, okay? In this first book, we are following a serial killer who seems to have like weird religious motivations because he is carving a cross into his victims and severely mutilating them and they're all women. So they are gonna catch this dude, and figure out what is going on with him, why is he doing this, and what is going on in the, I love this phrase, dark underbelly of the town that might allow for a predator like this to thrive. And this is just the first book. Like once you get into this one, if you are into it, you will love the entire series. Next up, I wanna talk about another one of my favorite books of all time and that is Jar of Hearts by Jennifer Hillier. Please check trigger warnings on this one for sexual violence, sexual assault, because that is the most dark and disturbing part of this book, at least for me. In this book, we're following Gio, who is a very morally gray, kind of like a good for her girly main character. And she has recently been arrested for a crime that she assisted. She was kind of like a part of it, but she wasn't the main perpetrator back when she was in high school. So I believe it's like 15 years ago. And and she's just now being imprisoned for her part in the crime. So we're following a dual timeline back in the 90s, early 2000s, when she assisted her boyfriend in killing her best friend. And we're also following her in present day, where there's a copycat killer and she believes her ex might be after her, or it's someone who is wanting to recreate the crime and kill her instead. As we're following both sets of murders, one in this like nostalgia campy Y2K feeling and one in this intense almost like orange is the new black kind of feeling because Gio was in prison and she's recently gotten out. It is breakneck pace. It is crazy twist. The suspense, the darkness, just all of it was so good. I felt like I lived a million lives while I was reading this thriller. Like Every single part of the book is so distinct in my brain, but they were all part of this book. And I read it all in just a few hours because I could not put it down. So dark, so disturbing, but so good. The twist and the ending literally blew my mind. Next up, I have Fierce Kingdom by Jen Phillips. And this is about a mother and her son who is a toddler and they are trapped in the zoo during an active shooter situation. The whole book takes place over just a couple hours of this mother trying to save herself and her son and anyone else she counters along the way, not only from the psychological effects of the situation that they're in, the trauma of it, but also from obviously the active shooter 
and the animals in the zoo. There are so many threats in this book and it all happens so fast. This is literally like living through a traumatic event with these characters. It is so disturbing. My heart was literally going a million miles a minute as I was reading this book. If you want something fast, dark, intense, and ultimately driven by a mother's fierce love for her child, you will love Fierce Kingdom. Also that zoo setting, like so unique. Next up, I have All the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Cosby. And really, I wanna recommend all of S.A. Cosby's books. They're all really dark, really disturbing. They read like a Tarantino film, okay? They're bloody, they're gory, and they are emotionally intense. My favorite of all of his books is Blacktop Wasteland, but I feel like I've yapped about that one enough. And this is his newest release, All of the Sinners at Bleed. It came out last year and I gave it five stars. We are following the first black sheriff of this small town. And immediately after he's elected sheriff, a shooting happens at the local school. And he has to deal with that, figure out who's the perpetrator, the motivations for it, and he's just dealing with being the newest sheriff and a black sheriff in this little small southern town. So he has a lot on his hands and he uncovers something that goes way deeper than he initially thought this case would be. Intense, disturbing, commentary heavy, fast paced, couldn't put it down, read it in one night. That's how all of S.A. Cosby's books go for me, but I absolutely love them. A duo of books that I've recommended quite a bit recently are Saving Noah and One of Our Own by Lucinda Berry. One of Our Own is kind of like the light version of Saving Noah. We're following a suicide hotline operator who gets involved with the girl who's calling because she believes that she might have a personal connection to her even though there's supposed to be a level of confidentiality there. The audio is less than four hours long. It's quick, it's fast, it's intense. Obviously there are themes of suicidal ideation but also sexual assault. Really intense but really really well done. Great commentary, great moral dilemma kind of content. If you can't tell I love thrillers like that. It's a quick read but it's not an easy read and it's kind of the light version of Saving Noah which is like the real wreck that I want in this spot. Saving Noah follows a 17 year old who is dealing with a pedophilic disorder. I know that that's a very controversial thing, but as a mental health professional, I have my own stance on it. I have my own stance on a lot of paraphilias. And this book really shines a light on pedophilic disorder, which is very different from pedophilic behaviors. I do want to clarify that. Having uncontrollable intrusive thoughts of a pedophilic nature is very different than acting on those thoughts and there are people who have those thoughts and do not act on them which my heart breaks for anyone suffering from that affliction. And this book kind of goes into that. The impact on this boy's family, specifically his mother, as his mother finds out about some crimes her son may have committed. Probably the most emotionally intense book that I've read. I was a puddle of tears at the end of this book. It is so dark, so disturbing, but I feel like this book needed to be written and I feel like a lot of people need to read it. Also, in reading the negative reviews for this book, it seems like it was just a emotional reaction of people not being able to comprehend having empathy for someone who is a perpetrator of violence. So I feel like even the negative reviews let you know that this book is doing something. It is dark, it is disturbing, but it is meaningful. And again, like Fierce Kingdom, it is all about a mother's love for her child. I'm literally choking up thinking about it. Like, it's so good. But please only read it if you feel like you're equipped to. Next up, I have The Soulmate by Sally Hepworth. I feel like Sally Hepworth does a really great job of implementing mental health elements in her book. And The Soulmate is one of the darkest ones that I've read from her. There are strong themes of suicidal ideation and a scene where someone does complete a suicide. So know that going in. We're following a family who lives on the 
the edge of a cliff and the cliff is right outside their house literally like 10 feet outside their door is a well-known spot where people complete suicide so the father of the family kind of like takes it upon himself to be this savior and talk people down from the ledge when they go to complete at this cliff however something sketchy is going on when someone does end up completing and that's never happened before because he always manages to talk them down. Obviously, it's not his fault, we think, until investigators find out that he has a prior connection to the woman who completed suicide this time around. And everyone's mental health is being looked into in this book. It is very emotionally intense, very psychologically disturbing, but ultimately I do think it's well done. I think that there is some controversy around the mental health rep in this book. I'm a mental health professional and I'm gonna tell you right now, this feels accurate to my experience. So take with that what you will. Definitely look at trigger warnings, especially around suicidal ideation and mental health. But if this sounds like something that you're looking for, go for it. Can tell you right now, it'll hook you. And my last rec of this video is probably the darkest, and that is Three Hours by Rosamund Lupton. This is a British, I don't even want to call it thriller, because it's more like literary account. It feels real, but it's fictional, obviously. And it just takes place over the three hours during a school shooting. I went through a hyperfixation phase where I was like so obsessed with Columbine. It's just like so, I can barely wrap my mind around the concept of it. So I went down this hole of like the psychological place you have to be in to do something like that. And three hours is very similar to that, but obviously it's a fictional account. So we can kind of go into different theories and speculations over the course of this book around psychological disturbances, mental health that leads to violent outbursts without, you know, using a real case. We follow a ton of different perspectives, teachers, students, faculty, perpetrators, over the course of this three hour assault on this school. It is so sad, it's so heavy, it's so intense and psychologically disturbing. But ultimately, there is a lot of meaning and commentary in there and it satisfied that like morbid curiosity that I have to know like what could possibly drive a person to do this? And what is it like to live through that? How do you cope when you live through that and you leave on the other side? So, so, so super dark. But obviously, if you clicked on this video, that is what you're looking for. So I hope you guys take these recs and you're okay. I like the dark things. So I know if you like the dark things, you will probably not necessarily enjoy these, but be shocked, mind blown, and disturbed by them as well. And if you want four more recommendations in this category, I have an extended cut with four more book recommendations over on my Patreon. I do this for all of my sit down recommendation videos. I will do 12 on YouTube and then gatekeep four more for a total of 16 over on Patreon. If you want the extended cut, it's available as well as all the other videos, extended cuts that I've ever done. Uh, they're available for all tiers, including my lowest tier, which is $3.99 a month. So if you wanna check that out for some more dark and disturbing recs, I will link that down below. I would love to have you over on my Patreon, but if not, I'm already loving having you over here. So again, thank you so much for watching watching. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And of course, don't forget to go to therapy and read a book this week. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!